Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer greatly. From the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. Then Jesus, then Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him. God forbid, Lord, no such thing shall ever happen to you. He turned to Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan. You are an obstacle to me. You are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wishes come after me must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. What profit would there be for one to gain the whole world and forfeit his life? Or what one can give in exchange for his life? For the Son of Man will come with his angels in his Father's glory, and there he will pay all according to his conduct. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. So there we have it. It says in the reading, Do not conform yourself to this age. Well, then let's not do that. Let's take seriously what God is telling us. The greatest reward that we'll ever get is the rewards of an eternal life. That we don't deserve it, and because of our own sinfulness, have rejected it. And at the same time, God offers His mercy his love and forgiveness. And, you know, it's not unusual in life. Like, as we as we grow, then we go, I, I, I kind of get it now. And I, I, I watched a movie last night that I didn't think was on Netflix. I didn't even think it was going to be a good movie. You know, I gave it five minutes, and uh, there's a really good movie about a, a, a drug dealer um, falling in love with a church girl, and he, he couldn't do what he normally did, it, what he thought he was his own power and riches, driving a Bentley and having an eight-bedroom house that only he lived in. You know, and he had his crew around him that that uh, were his henchmen. And, you know, like, being, being a guy who's driving a Bentley, he sees this woman in Los Angeles, and he whips a Yui in the middle of the street and is driving 60 down it. 30 and uh, didn't quite get caught up to her and the police pulled him over. But in another probably not capricious act of God he runs into her again and the sparks fly but the, the reality is that she's not going to accept the guy who's not a godly man because that's their, that's their house. And it wasn't that he wasn't raised right. He just found his way into a life of great sin and causing others to sin. He was hard and fearless, he thought. But love changes us. It really does if we allow it to. And, and what was happening with him was 
you know, he, he had every excuse not to go to church with her until one day he really didn't have an excuse. And he went there, and he actually heard the words of the preacher. And it started him on a deeper journey. Because she was not conformed to this world. And there was no way they were going to fall into bed before they were wed. And then she got in a car wreck and was in a coma. And he got to that point where you beg God for mercy. Please, God, take me instead. I deserve it. Please don't let her die. Please. And he stayed by her bedside day and night until she opened her eyes. And he was right next to her. And he called all the family members in. And she was restored to life. And he found out that that putting a bunch of money in the collection plate doesn't buy it for you. Just showing up on Sunday doesn't buy it for you. It's in those wee small hours of the morning when we suffer. When we're worried about our children. When we're worried about our parents. And the only, the only place to go is God. And how horrific is it if you don't believe in God and your loved one is going to leave this life to what? And on the other end of the equation, when you're not begging for someone's life back, but begging God to take them so there will be no more suffering, no more pain. I have done that. I didn't want Kathy to stay. Couldn't eat or drink anything. Was in horrific pain. And nothing was going to change that. Sure, God can work a miracle, and, and he has, and he does. But in the light of that not happening, that a spirit-filled woman would want to go into the arms of all, her almighty creator and come and love her mom who had died because a drunk driver hit her so hard that a week later they went to the crash site and her mother's wristwatch was fully intact on the road, on the shoulder actually. But to be able to bury someone who I knew the day before she was lucid enough that I could hear her general confession. And for these and any sins I may have forgotten, I absolve you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We all stood, my surrogate family, in the, in the faith that guides us, in the hope of eternal life. Is it sad? Yeah, it's sad. But it's also great joy that the bishop would step aside so that I might preach. Because you know, no priests get to hear other priests preach because there's too few of us. And if the bishop comes, it's always the bishop show. So 
I was the only priest not wearing a mask. Go figure. And when the sign of peace came, I gave a physical sign of peace to every single priest and the, my favorite deacon up there. And when I got to the bishop, he extended his hand. I grabbed his hand and I reverenced his ring. It's a sign and symbol of the authority that God has placed in him. And every one of these homilies are recorded so that no one can any longer say, well, I thought I heard Father Rick condemn Buckram or anything else. And that bishop can never, I mean, well, maybe he could, but what I'm saying is that, is that once you hear the heart, when you see the service, when you see humility, they are signs and symbols of a religious and faithful relationship with Almighty God. We can judge them by their fruits. We can judge ourselves by our fruits. And then, you can say, I once was a bad man. I once did every sin. But God had mercy on me. And he'll have mercy on you and everyone you know or meet. If we ask for it, and that love will transform our lives and make us the people that God has chosen us to be. So you pray for your kids when they wander. I wandered far. Pray for your spouse that they might know God ever more intimately. You pray for your neighbor, especially the one that annoys you the most. Who was out on the God of the lawn tractor on Sunday morning? Maybe they just did that to get it in before they went to church, I hope. But our hope is in the Lord, who made heaven and earth, who has given us a gift that we cannot pay for. A gift that is eternal life. So may no one go earlier than they need to. But my one last prayer for Kathy was, and it was the one that made me cry the most. I asked my own mother, to come and get her and take her home. Kathy died at 3.40 in the morning, the hour of mercy. Another mere coincidence, my friends? No. These are the gifts God gives us. The first and foremost is life. And we put it constitutionally. If we don't get life right, nothing else matters. These are our times. This is our age. These are our demons that we face. But with the grace of God and courage that God gives us, we will be able to weather every single storm. Not because we're trying to save our own life, but we're trying to save life itself. Whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. Whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. To George Soros and those types, 
What profit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit his life? God loves us. He wants us to be happy. And he's willing to do just about anything in grace so that you can co cooperate with that grace in that salvation of your soul. Look, you're doing it. You're, this is an example. You come here week in, week out, celebrate the Holy Mass, receive Jesus, body, blood, soul, and divinity. Man, he ain't that far away. And if you have a sin problem, it has its resolution in confession. If all just at the death's door, you say, Father, forgive me for my sins and for any sins that I cannot remember. And the priest says, in the persona of Christi, of Jesus Christ, I absolve you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. If that isn't an act of love, I don't know what is. So my brothers and sisters, keep that before you this week. For any challenges that you might have, tell people that, you know, when you're out shopping, when you're out doing you say, God bless you and me. And perhaps that's just the one little straw that breaks the dam of sin. And in comes rushing the mighty grace of Almighty God. May God be praised now and forever. May the Blessed Mother be honored for being the Mother of God. And all the other angels and saints in our relatives in heaven, that they might continue to pray for us, that we might be true to the end. Let us rise and profess our faith together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from light, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, consubstantial with the Father, and through him all things are made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. Thank you.